<coughs> we had stopped at uh, verse uh, line number 84 uh, of the Buddha and uh, we will have later Sheikh Ridwan inshallah will read the, the Buddha for us where Imam Lamsari rahimahullah wa nafa'ana bi asrarihi wa ulumi fi darain he says tabarak Allahu ma wahyun bi muktasabin wa la nabiyun ala ghaybin bi muttahami hallowed is Allah abounding in blessings is Allah revelation cannot be unearned and nor can a prophet be accused of untruth with regard to the unseen hallowed is Allah Revelation cannot be earned, and nor can a prophet be accused of untruth with regard to the unseen. Now this line of prose emphasizes two important tenets of faith, of our Akidah. Firstly, that no one can receive revelation except he is appointed by Allah as a prophet or a messenger. It is a gift from that, it is a gift that Allah bestowed upon those men he had chosen. With regard to which Allah says in verse 1 to 4 of Surah Al-An'am, <clears throat> وَإِذَا جَاءَتْهُمْ آيَةٌ قَالُوا لَن نُؤْمِنَا حَتَّى نُؤْتَى مِثْلَ مَا أُوْتِيَ رُسُلُ اللَّهِ اللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ حَيْثُ يَجْعَلُ رِسَالَتَهِ The last part is the one which is most what he called crucial. When a revelation or divine sign came to them, the people of Makkah, they said, you should never believe until we ourselves are given the like of the revelations that the messengers of God were given. What is the response? Allah knows best where to place his revelation, who to give his revelation to. Then in verses 31 and 232 of the chapter Zukhruf, Allah mentions in response, to the objection of the pagan Meccans to Muhammad وسلم, receiving revelation instead of the leader of the cities of Makkah and Ta'if Allah says revelation is a mercy which he apportions and bestows upon whom he chooses وَقَالُوا لَوْ لَنُزِّلَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنُ وَلَا رَجُلٍ مِنَ الْقَرِيَّتَيْنِ عَظِيمٍ أَهُمْ يَقْسِمُونَ رَحْمَةَ رَبِّكَ Allah says if only this Quran had been sent down to a man of greatness from either of the two cities, are they the ones who apportion the mercy of your Lord, O Muhammad? Certainly not. Secondly, that the Prophet wasallam was truthful in all that he conveyed to mankind about the unseen, which cannot be grasped by mankind through physical observation, especially the divine message of the Holy Quran which he received through revelation. Revelation, rev, revelance, our re, uh, reference to this is made <coughs> in verses 3 and 4 of an najm وَمَا يَنْتِكُوا عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَىٰ إِلَّا وَحْيُ He does not speak based on his desires. It is but a revelation revealed to him. Verse 24 of the chapter Takwir reads وَمَا هُوَ عَلَى الْغَيْبِ بِضَنِينَ And he, Muhammad وسلم, will never conceal or withhold the knowledge of that which was revealed to him from knowledge of the unseen. In another recital, بِضَنِينَ which means he had no doubt with regard to that which he received as being the truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> we'll do one more line before we do the reading of the Qasidah. كم أبرأت وصبا باللمس راحته وأطلقت أربا من ربقة اللمم كم أبرأت وصبا باللمس راحته وأطلقت أربا من ربقة اللمم Many a sick person did his صلى الله عليه وسلم palms cure by touch and many a person did they release from the yoke of satanic afflictions and sin Many a sick person did his palm, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, cure by touch. And many a person did they release from the yoke of satanic afflictions and sin. 
and Arab here means need and Aribun the active participle is synonymous with Zuhaja, one who is in need. Ribqa refers to a noose. Lamam can refer to both insane behavior caused by affliction by evil spirits and it can also refer to sins. <coughs> Normally minor sins as mentioned in verse uh, 32 for Najm الَّذِينَ يَجْتَنِبُونَ كَبَائِرَ الْإِثْمِ وَالْفَوَاهِشَ إِلَّا لَمَمْ Those who avoid the major sins and indecent acts falling short only in the minor sins, the minor offenses, Allamam. Then Imam Tirmidhi, he narrated on the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu He said that indeed Satan has influence on the son of Adam and so do the angels. إِنَّ لِلشَّيْطَانِ لَمَّا تَنْبِدْنِ آدَمْ وَلِلْمَلَكِ لَمَّا As for the satanic influence, which is Lamma to Shaitan, it is promises of evil and denial of the truth. As for the angelic influences, it is the promises of good and acceptance of the truth. And so whoever experiences it, he should know that it is angelic. He should know it, meaning angelic influence, is from Allah. And whoever experiences the other, which is the satanic influence, he should seek protection against Satan, shaitan. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then recited this verse 268 of Al-Baqarah which means Satan threatens you with the prospect of poverty الفقر, and prompts you to commit what is indecent while Allah promises you his forgiveness and bounties from him and Allah is all encompassing and all knowing. Verse 268 of Al-Baqarah. A reverence is made in the first part of this line of prose <coughs> to an aspect of the Prophet's miracles. And I would mention three of many similar incidents regarding the healing touch of the blessed hands of our Prophet It is reported that the eye of Qatada fell from its socket and was hanging on his cheek during the battle of Uhud. He came to the Prophet وسلم, and said, I love a woman and I am afraid that she would despise me if she sees me in this state. No more handsome. And that the affection in her heart for me would be removed. The Prophet وسلم, took it with his blessed hand and put it back, fitted it back into a socket and said, Allahumma aksibha jamala. O oh Allah, make it attain beauty. And it became the better of his two eyes. It became the better of his two eyes. In another incident, a hand of Muhammad ibn Hatib was burnt by fire. He came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who wiped his hand over it, and it was healed to its original state. In another incident, Shurahbil al Jufi had a growth on the palm of his hand, which made it impossible for him to hold the sword or the reins of a horse. He complained of it to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who began rubbing it and pressing it with his hand, with his blessed hand, till it completely disappeared, leaving no trace of it. In a narration recorded by Imam Ahmad, on the authority of Ibn Abbas, a woman brought her son, <coughs> who was possessed, to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the second meaning of the lamam. She informed that he was always afflicted, when they were having food, whenever he had food, he was going to fix him. And that he used to ruin their food. The Prophet wasallam wiped his chest with his blessed hand <coughs> while he prayed for him. And the boy vomited a creature like a black puppy and he was cured. Then in the second part 
of this line, the author, Imam Rabusayri, rahimahullah, has likened satanic afflictions that lead to a lack of sanity and the commitment of sins to a knotted rope or a noose around the neck of an animal, denying it freedom and the ability to escape. Now the Prophet wasallam had indeed been sent to free mankind from evil acts and baseless superstitions and guide them to belief and complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now these two lines of prose are most beneficial for the treatment of one who suffers from fits and sieges. So that we 84 and uh, 85, according to Imam al-Bajuri in his explanation. And he said, they should be written between his eyes and on a piece of blue cloth which is rolled up and one of its ends burnt and placed under the nose of the person who has suffered from fits. He would, upon inhaling the smoke, shout or scream and regain consciousness. And the writing between his two eyes is erased. He would be cured with Allah's permission. One can also read these two lines of prose, 84 and 85, together with Quranic verses that are normally recited for protection or make the affected person carry it with him or her. Wallahu a'lam. And then we hand over to our Sheikh Ridwan from Egypt. Uh, so we have stopped at 85. Inshallah, we'll continue with uh, 86 uh, next lesson, inshallah. Thank you.